This is uh, topic H, the last one in our biology one unit, and it's variation and inheritance. So we're going to be talking about variation quite a lot today. Variation basically just means differences, so differences between people. So an example of a difference between people would be gender, so whether you're male or female. Um, we need to think about what determines your gender. Well, that's going to be your genes, so that means it's something that you have inherited something that you got from your parents. Another type of variation would be whether or not you have pierced ears. So we need to decide what determines that. Well, that would be your environment. So we would say that would be an environmental variation because you're not born with pierced ears or not. It's something that you decide to do and you're often influenced to do it because of your environment. So those are the two types of variation that we're going to focus on. So let's just have a little look at inherited first. You can inherit lots of things from your parents and it's your genes that decide what it is that you inherit. So some examples are your skin colour, whether or not you can roll your tongue, eye colour, your uh, race, height is a little bit influenced by your genes, uh, whether your ears are attached to your, uh, your ear lobes are attached to the side of your head or if they're free to hang. Those are all inherited things. So some examples of environmental variation. These are things that depend on our surroundings or things that have happened to us. So um, scars or burns are definitely environmental. Tattoos, whether or not you've turned your skin orange is definitely environmental. The tone of your hair. So if you've dyed your hair, that would be environmental variation. And the length of your hair as well because that's something that you can choose to cut short or let grow long. And your decision to do that is often based on environmental influences. Some things, however, are caused by both your genes and your environment. So for instance, your skin tone could be a combination of um, genes and environment. So for instance, you could be um, white, but have spent a lot of time in the sun, in which case your skin could be quite tanned but the fact that you are that colour is a combination of both your environment and your genes. How long you can grow your nails is another one that's going to be, or how long your nails are, it's going to be another one that's a combination of environmental and genetic because um, it depends on your genes and the cells that you have in your nails as to how long you can actually grow them and there is then also the environmental side of it as to why or how long you might choose to grow them. So it could be a combination of both. And height is a fantastic one, uh, mass as well, your weight, that's a really good example of both genetic and environmental effects. I mean, if your parents are tall, you're likely to be tall, but if you had a poor diet whilst you were growing up, even if your parents are tall, you might not reach your full height or your full potential height. So it's both your environment and your genes that have had effect that have had an effect on that. And it, the same goes with uh, your body weight as well. So we need to talk about exactly what's causing these characteristics, these variations. Um, and it's down to your chromosomes, basically. So inside the nucleus of the human cell, so the bit that controls the cell, there are 46 chromosomes and they all come in pairs. Now, important to remember that gametes, so sex cells, so sperm and egg basically, have 23 chromosomes because they get half in each of them. Now, the chromosomes are what contain your genes. And it is the combination of genes that you get that lead to your variation. They'll decide your gender, they'll decide your air, eye colour, all these things. So, the genes live inside the chromosomes. So, first chromosome that we need to know about, it's very important, is the sex chromosome. You've probably heard of it. Um, it comes in two varieties. There's the X or the Y. So, there's a little picture of them there. You should be able to spot which one's the X. It does look a bit like an X. And then the Y is the small round one. So, it depends on what combination you get. So, if you get an X and a Y, so your sex chromosome pair is X and Y, you'd be male. If you get two X's, you'll be female. So that's all that decides it. Okay, so 
very bad joke to help you remember it. Horribly sexist as well, but there we go. Right, so genes come in different varieties. And the type of gene you got is called your allele. So genes come in different types of alleles. Now, some alleles take preference over others. So if they are the stronger allele, if you will, we say that they're dominant. So you may know that brown eye colour is dominant over blue eye colour. And that's because the allele that codes for brown is a dominant allele. So if you have that one, you'll definitely have brown eyes, even if your other one is blue. So a little example, this is something called a Punnett diagram and it's something that we need to get used to. So when we're looking at the alleles, we give them letters. So these are the alleles here. So this one, the, the dad's got two lowercase g's for the particular allele we're interested in. Now if it's lowercase, that means that it is a recessive gene. And this one over here, so the mum's got one recessive and one dominant gene. So this is what makes them uh, blue and the lower case makes them black. So if we look at the possible options, so dad could give this one here, this uh, recessive allele, and we'll put those into this column here. So that's his recessive allele there. And mum could also give a recessive allele and those go across that way. So there's mum's recessive alleles. So that gives us our first option. So first offspring number one option would get two recessive genes. So they would be uh, black, which is the recessive color, this one here. Now, another option is that if dad still gives the same allele, but this time mum gives the dominant one, we end up with um, a mixture. So we've got a dominant allele with a recessive one. So the dominant one wins, so we end up with the blue color. So we can go down the other side as well. So dad could give his other recessive one, his other recessive allele, which is this one and this one. And mum can give her dominant allele. So we can end up with um, another recessive one. So that gives me another black. Or I can end up with another blue one because mum's got the dominant one, so it wins. So that's how these Punnett diagrams work. We'll do a bit more practice in class with them. They're, uh, once you get the hang of them, they're pretty easy. So, <clears throat> this is the bit where we've got to try and get our terminology correct. So, the words we need to get our heads around are phenotype and genotype. So, phenotype is the characteristic that's shown. The genotype is their specific genetic makeup. So, if I just go back to the slide we had before, Dad here... His, pheno oh, sorry. Uh, his phenotype is that he is black, but his genotype is that he is two lowercase g's, he's two recessive alleles. Uh, over here, we've got, there we go. So this one is uh, blue, so that's the phenotype, because that's the characteristic, but the genotype is a capital G and then a lowercase g. So the phenotype is um, what characteristic they get because of it. And the genotype is what the alle alleles are that give them that characteristic. Okay, so what that does mean is that two people can have the same phenotype, but different genotypes. So for instance, um, if someone had, or if the dogs would go back to them, if I had two dominant alleles, but I also had a dominant and a recessive, they would have the same phenotype because they would both have the dominant characteristic, but they have different genotypes. However, if someone's got the same genotype, they have to have the same phenotype. You'll get the hang of it. And I think I've said those words more than enough for one slide. So we now need to do homozygous and heterozygous. So homo means the same. So it means a person who has two alleles that are the same. So the easy example from what we we're doing before is we have our two capital G's or our two lowercase g's. And hetero, which means different. So heterozygous means that the person has two different alleles. 
So that would be a heterozygous genotype. You'll get the word, don't panic. So we need to talk about what genes do. So genes are what carry the information that tell the cell what to do. Um, they carry the instructions to make the proteins, uh, whether those are structural proteins, so ones that are the building blocks of the cells, or they could be uh, enzymes. So the enzymes are things that make things happen in the cells. Um, so they control the building of everything, basically. So pretty important, really. Sometimes genes can be faulty, though. So there could be a problem with them. Um, now, this can be something that... Um, is just inherited and you can't do anything about it it's just that the gene that you've got doesn't quite make the right protein that it should and this causes problems so examples of these sorts of disorders are haemophilia cystic fibrosis sickle cell anemia and red green color blindness if you just remember one or two of those that would be great so as i said you can inherit these from parents but sometimes um just in the natural course of um, life really occasionally a gene can mutate on its own and if that mutation is um, particularly important it can cause a disorder now some mutations don't have any negative effects but um, so we wouldn't even know it's only if they affect the functioning of the body that we would have a disorder okay so that's the end of this topic uh, Big thing to get your head around on this one is just the language, really. Uh, with practice, you'll get there, though. So remember, if you've got any questions, ask me the next time you see me.